Um, Amanda is going to have a very nice uh, conversation, like a panel discussion around how things have been in Banbury and sort of local area during COVID-19, uh, but also the partnership work that we know is absolutely thriving in Banbury, uh, very much because of our age-friendly Banbury partnership, um, but also just because of the feeling of community and the power of getting things done together. So I think it's gonna be, as Adrian said, very lively uh, debate. Um, now, sadly, because I am on my phone, I will not be able to share any slides, which is probably good news for lots of people. Um, but just to say that the Resilience Fund continues to go from strength to strength. Um, and I would like to have a big shout out for the OCF team who have been working tirelessly to distribute, I believe, the amount paid to date is 447,140. Um, we do have um, somewhat of a small backlog, so many of you will have noticed that we have paused for applications just for a very short while, whilst we can make sure that we get everything, um, you know, where, where we need to be. Uh, but the funds raised are now well over a million, and we're standing at 1,096,160. Um, typically, we would show the map of Oxfordshire, um, and it's good for Amanda's benefit that uh, we are making grants uh, throughout the county and in particular given the spotlight on Banbury today 11% of the funds distributed have actually gone to the Banbury um, district so that's that's great news and I think uh, the purpose of trying to focus on Banbury and our work within the A-Trendly Banbury partnership is because Many of the calls recently have been talking about digital exclusion and how the charitable sector is sort of trying to up its game in becoming more connected with both the beneficiaries that it supports, but also how it can work in partnership with other organisations. So I think that that's really why we've pulled together the three organisations today um, because of their work in this area. And I think that if I could ask Amanda to sort of come on now, but and also Penny Thulis from, as Adrian said, she's Chief Exec of Age UK Oxfordshire. Tim Tarby Donald, who is Director of Visit Banbury, which is a new community interest company doing great things, trying to make Banbury a great place to go to. Uh, and also Keith Davis, who is the volunteer manager, largely around transport, really. So we've heard from Citizens Advice before, but this is their work in terms of volunteer drivers, uh, which I think you'll agree does probably need quite a bit of technology behind it. Um, and I'm not sure if we do have Richard Pantlin today. I know that we did um, ask him to attend, but I'm not too sure if he's actually here on the call, but he was going to come from the County Council to share some of their learnings as we're recovering from COVID. So. Um, if I hand over to Amanda, I think that would be great. Thank you, Jane. Um, and thank you, Adrian. Um, I just have to say again, well done to all of OCF. Um, over a million pounds is absolutely wonderful. And to have turned around, um, well, getting on for half a million pounds of grants handed out to the most deserving cases is absolutely wonderful. Um, Delighted that 11% has gone to Banbury. Um, Banbury, um, as Jane and all the OCF know, was one of the places I really wanted to concentrate on um, because you are the second biggest town in Oxfordshire and um, somehow rather missed out on having a high sheriff for, for a bit. So um, I was going to try and spend quite a lot of time in Banbury. Um, but... Um, my first sort of virtual visit was last uh, Saturday afternoon in the middle of the um, thunder and lightning um, when I, well, I eventually, I'm sorry, my, my digital skills are not great. Um, I took a bit of time to get onto the um, big lunch or join the big lunch, but I did wear my hat and, um, and it was wonderful to um, meet you, Tim. So... Um, uh, perhaps I could start uh, by just hearing a bit more about Visit Banbury and um, um, how you set about organising your virtual big lunch. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, really, really delighted to be on the call, to be invited. Um, really, our, our story started with the big lunch. It started in my own personal community in 2009 doing the big lunch, which was an idea started by the Eden Project 
in that year um, to try and bring communities and neighbours closer together, sharing food. And 11 years further on, um, Visit Banbury became a community organisation and then a social enterprise 12 months ago. And we wanted, when we joined in the, the partnership with Age Friendly, um, we wanted to try and use the power of the big lunch and what we knew, the community cohesion that that creates uh, to, to bring to the party, if you like, to the age friendly party. Um, and so when clearly we couldn't hold a, vert, uh, a physical party, uh, which we got some funding to do from the, uh, the National Lottery, uh, heads together with, with B and Penny and a few others, uh, we decided we'd try to do the virtual big lunch, the big virtual lunch that was done all across the country. Well, it was absolutely wonderful. And the, the energy um, of um, the singing and the dancing, uh, as I say, what with the thunder and lightning going on overhead was, was fantastic. Um, and, um, but so how did you, how did you get, I mean, there were people, were there people from care homes or, or uh, how did you rally the troops? <laughs> Oh, there was and, someone, and, sorry. Sorry, no, I think there was someone who'd, who'd never been on a Zoom call before. There, there was certainly, um, we, we had a, a care home joined us. They unfortunately had some technical problems, but we got High Market House uh, using their cinema room. So we'd managed to work out how they could actually broadcast into their cinema, which was lovely, but they did have some technical issues with their sound. Um, but I've, I've got to give credit to, to B. Myson because we used the network that we've established locally um, and put information out to, to everybody who is part of the Age Friendly part, a Partnership in Banbury, um, both the partner groups, but also lots of participants. Um, and we were able to bring you know, people in there that I'd never met before. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't think that it actually connected in that way. People had never been to a big lunch physically. <laughs> um, and, and there certainly were some people there who'd never used Zoom in that way and certainly when we broke out into little breakout rooms that was totally different for people as well to use it that way. Mm -hmm. Well it, 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 it was tremendous, really was. Um, so um, well uh, um, I think we're, we're meant to be concentrating a little bit today on the um, uh, sort of Age UK or Age Friendly Banbury and things and um, so I mean perhaps I'd, lo I'd love to hear from Penny um, as well uh, about work that's done in Banbury. Um, uh, I know in connection with the um, Community Foundation but um, no so I'd love to hear from, from Penny. Okay, well, in, in, in some ways, Tim has, has, has started the ball rolling brilliantly there because he started to talk about what I think is maybe one of the most exciting things that's um, happening, certainly from our perspective um, uh, around um, the Banbury area, um, which is this the Age Friendly Banbury Partnership, which started as a very small kernel of an idea about two years ago and has grown and grown. Um, because um, there has been such enormous enthusiasm for the idea. People somehow um, can understand what it, is, what, what it means to make a place with which they're familiar more age-friendly, which basically means it's easier for older people to, um, to, to, to be welcome and feel um, that they can make the most of that environment. So the age friendly thing has really uh, taken off in Banbury. It's a first in Oxfordshire. Um, so that's something that Banbury should feel very proud of. Oxfordshire, is, Oxford isn't doing it. <laughs> so this is, this is Banbury's own thing, which I think is really important and is terrific. Um, and it's a, it, it's a worldwide movement. So there are cities and towns all over the world who are like us, working with older people themselves to find out what is important for them and what would make this place, Banbury in our case, a more, a more age-friendly environment, and then working together to try to do something about it. So, and that, uh, for me, I suppose, I, it, it's easy to 
it's easy to use the word partnership and it be a bit of a cliche really what what has been i think so exciting about the banbury work is that a whole lot of organizations whether statutory so child district council have been brilliant in supporting this work but so have a lot of voluntary organizations and so frankly have a lot of individuals so it's 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 been i always think of it a bit like a flag that we've run up a mast and lots of people have said yes we we'd like to be part of this um and we'd like to make a difference in our local community and we can see ways we can so and i i suspect that that partnership has um because it was quite well established when the covid crisis started i think that has helped us we've had something we've had a bit of a base to build on um and and shape up um a, a little bit of the response in banbury to covid19 which again has been um a quite exceptional response i think so, uh, I, um, I mean, most of what you offer, you've had to do over the telephone um, during the crisis, have you? I mean, all, all the support. We have, yes, it's, so, so, so you're right, Amanda, we've shifted an awful lot of the support we provide to people um, onto the telephone. Um, and we are becoming, we're all sick, 58 of us, I was 60 when I last looked, 58 of us here are using this um, amazing bit of technology, which um, most of us were not using before COVID hit us. So we've become proficient very quickly at meeting with people in different ways. So increasingly what started as um, a telephone response from ours has been, has, from us has been shifting um, so that we're doing a lot more um, in, in, in meetings where we can see people's faces basically, um, which makes a lot of difference to how we communicate, doesn't it? It does. But and what, what sort of proportion of people in their own homes who you might be supporting would have the facility to be able to have a Zoom call? Do you know? Okay, well, too few, Amanda. Yeah. Um, mm. And those who we might most need to support um, are the least likely mm. to be um, to, 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 to have that access in their own homes. Mm. Or to even really know about it or to have thought about it or dreamt about mm. it. So um, I, think, I think one of the phrases that, that's on many more people's lips now than it was before the crisis is this, this digital divide which has become so much more stark i think since 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 we started the covid crisis I, 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 it is very marked that mm -hmm. those of us who have been able to use the technology to do our shopping to do our banking to find out information about where you buy a mask or to or what kind of a mask you need to wear um, it, th those those kinds of things which which have made um, uh, living through the last few weeks a lot more a, a, a lot simpler for people mm. have mm. not been accessible to too many people and i suppose the other element is the social element so we know from the conversations we have with older people on the telephone day in day out at the moment um, that many of them are missing hugely being able to see their families people have had new grandchildren that they haven't been able to see um, so and all of that has contributed to um, to 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 the um, uh, loneliness and isolation really which is an increasing worry as we get further into this um, for people so your question actually which I haven't answered at all I've just waffled <laughs> on um, in, in characteristic fashion was around numbers so um, I, I wrote some numbers down um, because I'm not very good at remembering numbers so in the UK there are something like 8.4 percent of the population who are not um, who've never used the internet never used it at all 
Um, and of that 8.4%, around 50% are older people which means 50% are not older people. And it's really important that we remember that this isn't just an issue for people in later life. It's an issue which tends to sit alongside poverty. It can sit alongside disability. Um, it can sit alongside um, certainly people from as, uh, uh, asylum seekers and people from um, refugee communities are less likely to be using the internet so there are there are real issues for people that many of us want to reach um, particularly at times like a vulnerability like this um, that, that prevent people um, and I think I, I, I looked up so those were national stats um, in Oxfordshire we think that somewhere in the region of 40% of the people uh, over the age of 75 have not um, used the internet. So those, so when, you, when you move into that much older cohort of the population, those percentages start to go up and, and, and make us worry. And if we look at, we look at numbers, um, that's around 10,000 men in Oxfordshire and around 18,000 women. So that's quite a lot of people over the age of 75 that, um, that are not using the internet for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, I can see a challenge that um, when we come out of all of this, we're going to have to have big social gatherings, aren't we? Where we actually do a bit of training and, and, um, <laughs> You know, it'll be the new cheese and wine. It'll be come and learn how to Zoom <laughs> and have fun as well. <laughs> and those I, I, who, yes, those no, who I can't I, attend will be doing it from their home, which will demonstrate, you know, um, to the people there. But um, there is, there's a great opportunity to um, use all of this in a positive way, isn't there? Yeah. Yes, um, yes, yes. Um, I, I think we have, so I think nationally there's a big opportunity, but I think locally, if we think Oxfordshire wide or, and or we think Banbury wide, I think there's a massive opportunity for businesses, for charities, for individuals to come together and really think, okay, this has we know that the last few weeks have been very difficult for some people mm -hmm. because they have largely because they haven't been able to communicate in the same way that many of us have. What are we going to do about this together? And I think, I, I think it's quite an exciting challenge. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of emphasis on it at the moment. So a lot of people are geared up to think about how they can help. So um, we, we, we just need to find ways of harnessing that energy. Absolutely. Um, now, uh, we've got another member on the, on the panel who I, sorry, my digital skills are not very good, so I can never find the right picture, but Keith, um, Keith. <laughs> I'm just trying to find you, um, I'd love to hear what you've been um, um, doing, because are you involved with the Citizens Advice Bureau? Yeah, I, I was a supervisor. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, hello everyone. Yes, yes, I found, <laughs> yeah. you, now. I found um, you. <laughs> I was a supervisor at Citizens Advice and in October 2017, I took on doing community transport with the volunteer driver service. They were called Volunteer Connect in those days, but it was a bit, it didn't do what it said on the tin really. So we rebranded and, and called ourselves Volunteer Driver Service. Uh, when COVID kicked off, um, we we were doing a full community transport scheme, but we've, we've not been able to take people since the two metre rule come in. Mm -hmm. um, the two metre rule um, is cars aren't two metres distance, even if you sit diagonally from the driver. So we've re-looked at what we were doing and we started doing food delivery. We did run the two services parallel for, for a few weeks, we stopped doing patients or, or we stopped doing people April the 8th and Oxfordshire stopped doing people May the 10th, I think it was. So we were a little bit ahead of the game knowing that 
it wasn't clear cut guide guidance. So that's part of what I've I've managed to get that up to a ministerial level. I'm quite pleased with that. And also I've got it with the clinical <laughs> commissioning group um, to try and get this this legislation published. I think we might see something June the 16th. I think the two metre might change. Don't know. Mm. Might be. There's something being announced. Um, so I got a text off my CEO on March the 15th that said, can you do food transport? You know, and I said, well, we're already doing patient. As I said, we're doing the same. But by March the 24th, so not long after, we'd uh, completed our first day of um, doing journeys in the north of Cherwell. So that was our first uh, parcel delivery. April the 1st, another week later, we did Vista and the whole of the south of Cherwell. So from the 15th to the 1st of April, we had a Cherwell-wide distribution for food parcels. We do emergency food parcels. We've been clear that that's why we're up to. People ring in, we don't put them on a list. Um, I consider what we do, we're a bit like the goalkeepers. If we're a bit quiet, it means the rest of the team's not doing too bad. So, mm -hmm. we, you know, that's, that's how we've pitched ourselves with emergency food parcels. It's about engagement. People have mentioned that already. People ring up um, and from when we send the parcel out, there's information in there. So we hope they'll self-refer. These can be older people, younger people. And if they don't answer the door, that was a flag. You know, they should be, they should have been self-isolate and why weren't they in? If they come to the door and don't look so well, that's a flag um, where we can refer them on. Um, that's not always the case. I don't look so clever, so it doesn't work. <laughs> but, um, and then we've got, um, if they're having quite a lot of boxes, our boxes are quite basic. So we'd be worried that they would come on and live off the boxes. But that's another flag. Um, to date, as I say, oh, and the other things we did, um, we, I, when I realised that COVID-19 was looking quite real, um, I, from that point, I got the whole office remote within two days. So that was quite a challenge. I enjoyed that. We we're already recruiting remotely because we were going out to interview people and then putting in petrol claims for 30 or £60 pound from a charity. It didn't feel quite right. So we, we, set ourselves up that we could recruit remotely, completely remotely, which wasn't just because of COVID. As I said, we, we had that in place before. Um, when we engaged with people, we looked up different ways of, of um, what they might, some people like dealing with money. So we looked and found people who could do food and they would take cash, not ideal, but that's what people wanted. We looked at what Morrisons were up to, We've been doing co-op deliveries because they were looking at volunteer drivers. Completely new for co-op. They were getting people to ring in. They'd go around, pick stuff, because remember what the shops were like back mm -hmm. eight some weeks ago. Um, they'd go around, pick stuff, ring the people back and say that'll be £18.50. And some of those people had never, were a bit worried about technology and stuff like that. But we'd found a way where that all they really needed to do was quote the card number on, on the back of a callback. So that was quite nice. And they could list out what they wanted. Didn't have to use the internet. They could just say, I'd like Pepsi tea bags rather than PG tips, please. And, and it served their needs great. Um, yeah, so that's what we've been up to. That's the changes we've done. To date, we've done 427 journeys. That's 1,576 parcels across the whole district. And we've done 3,688 journey miles. It's not as big of operation as, as when we're doing patient transport and, and, and community transport. I can't emphasize that enough. What we do with that is an incredible thing. It's absolutely incredible. This has been good. It's been a transition, but we're looking forward to getting back to the, to the patient transport and not having the need to deliver these food parcels and that things get um, as back to normal as, as soon as possible. Who, who's been packing your food parcels? Sophia, I should have mentioned yes, them actually. They're is. based in Didcot. I, I, was... thought, I, I thought it might be them. They, they've um, really Super. done a fantastic job. Mm. Yeah, and, and what they were, the, they were the real difference between this. And I should have bigged them up more. I apologise for that actually, <laughs> if there's anyone out there. But when we. Nice, nice to this, hear you, Keith. <laughs> 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 um, 
yeah, because um, that we we originally looked at going shopping for people, and it would have created all sorts of problems. You know, like um, how to deal with the money. And mm. people go back to Nelly and say, "Here's PG tips. I only like Thai food. Or what do you do then? You've got a black box of tea mm. bags you don't need. The shelves were empty anyway." Um, that we hadn't even got to the stage where social distancing had happened. People were going in and just, you know, it was almost like theft, you know, and their shelves were empty. And yeah. Sophia having those boxes for free, free packaged, standard, absolutely, that was the key. That was the difference between mm -hmm. what we were looking at trying to do and would have been difficult and what we ended up doing and has been superb. Mm -hmm. So I think I think um, I'm um, Sophia is is almost top of my list um, of places that I really want to visit when um, when I'm you know eventually allowed to a bit of freedom. Um, they have done a fantastic job, and you hear it sort of all over the county. Um, and just one last thing, Keith. How, how many are, are you all volunteers or or the, your drivers? The driver, oh yeah, another, that's another thing. Because we were already running the um, the patient transport and, and the community transport, I didn't want to impact that because I'd lost drivers from being over 70 and stuff like that. So this period between the 15th being a text and the 24th, our first delivery day, I started recruiting for drivers. I had 200 apply. And um, we, we did the whole, because people, and people just wanted to help they wanted to do so i knew it'd be like that. i knew it'd be a landslide like that and that's what happened um but we actually did the entire thing off just 120 drivers because i split the whole district down into zones like postcodes mm -hmm. on the fifth digit so ox 16 zero would be like the brett hill area and ox 26 mm -hmm. six would be mm -hmm. the section of, of vista and then I mapped drivers from those postcodes. So some were oversubscribed. Some of those postcodes have done very little because the rural communities have really been pulling together. You know, they've really been, mm -hmm. been looking after each other. We, we do, we do um, less mileage and more journeys in the centres of towns, obviously, than, than we do in, out in the rural areas. But uh, yeah, that, that, the, the drivers were all brand spanking new, 120 drivers recruited and put on and we probably took three weeks to process the last one we started off with a few drivers and they were still building up in the background and the people who were processing those volunteers were volunteers as well i think it's fantastic i think um the duke of marlborough or the duke of wellington you know in those those battles of blenheim or waterloo they would have been quite proud to have you on their side actually just sort of uh, commanding a few troops i think <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, I had somebody send something like the 1961 Civil Defence Act and what, and what we were doing or what I'd done, I hadn't seen it, was, was you couldn't get a, a Rizzler paper in between what, what that was saying to do and what, we ended, what, I, what I ended up doing, how, how I'd gone about it. I was really, really genuinely over the moon with that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I suppose the question to all all three of you, um, having um, well, as I, I haven't been to um, the nearest I've got to Banbury since lockdown, was um, delivering um, a few cool boxes to a kitchen where they were cooking for the Horton Hospital. Um, they were very smart, bright red um, cool boxes, and when they were delivered, apparently some doctor was coming in and said, "Oh, is that the blood arriving?" Uh, it was actually some meals going into the hospital but um, um, the obviously the, the, the center of Banbury Castle Quay and and everything um, there are all sorts of, sort of stories that um, uh, you know some shops are going and everything and what I mean I suppose to, to all of you I'm just wondering what some of that space I mean could that be used as as places for older people to get together and and maybe learn some of these skills about you know digital because it's not just learning how to use zoom and and um, the internet but it's obviously um learning not to be taken in by scams and and all that so um there are great plus points in digital 
but there's there's a there's a quite a nasty side of it as well, which el elderly people are very vulnerable to. I just w wondered what any of you think about that. Should I pick that one up in initially? I think um, so. One of the things that we were working on pre-COVID, um, we're very fortunate to be working closely with the district council and um, the the organisation that runs Castle Key, um, and they were looking at enabling Visit Banbury to set up a community hub so what we were looking to do is actually take on a retail space an empty retail space um, that we would effectively manage but on behalf of a range of community organizations so it'd be our day-to-day -day responsibility in our base but then what we would do is bring other organizations so um, for instance age friendly Banbury's had a number of pop-ups uh, events probably half a dozen pop-ups over the last year or two um, where they've used you know, for a day at a time, a, a, a space. But we were looking at something a little bit more per permanent. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether you've heard, we have a zero waste shop now in Castle okay. Key. That was the unit that we took on. And because that, that small business was doing so well and wanted to come and set up, we brokered the uh, conversation with Castle Key and they've taken that unit over because we weren't quite ready. Um, mm -hmm. And probably right with what's happened, you know, in hindsight, we were such a great thing. But we absolutely are having that dialogue with them as lot 29, the new part of the development opens. And also we are aware some of certainly the larger units may come available, how we could then use that as community space. Um, and there's a huge amount of discussion in town centre management across the UK about how communities will hopefully start to help re-energise town centres because retail mm. yes will get back on its feet but there aren't many big retailers who are coming in and investing so there will be spaces that can be open for communities and and certainly we've having some conversation with Keith's organization about there's a digital service that they provide potentially to come and help that exact process teaching older people to be able to get online and do that um mm. and so yeah we we are actively exploring that uh, obviously once things get back to a bit more normal, we will continue to explore uh, getting a unit in Castle Quay. Mm. That, that sounds brilliant. Um, and just the, just the right place for it, I would have thought. Uh, Absolutely. We did a, an age-friendly boundary walking tour of Castle Quay and looked mm. at the facilities they've got. Obviously, it's flat, it's indoors, it's covered, um, and, and quite accessible in terms of toilets, in terms of not far from the bus station, so it's an ideal place to put something where all the people potentially will will start to gravitate to come back into town. Mm, mm. Um, and um, uh, Penny, I was really interested to um, when I was just googling Age UK. I mean, there were there were two things. I was one. I thought your your Engage magazine is fantastic. Uh, um, but I was also really interested to hear about your the home share scheme. Oh, okay. Um, uh, are there are there some home shares going on in Banbury? There are not. No. Um, most of our home shares are actually in Oxford City, but there's absolutely no reason why. Um, there, there, there couldn't be home shares in Banbury, and it, it, indeed, I think, I think one of the, I think one of the interesting things that's happened during COVID is that we've had a lot more interest expressed. We thought we might have less because people are, um, people are staying put, um, but a lot of people were thinking, are thinking ahead and thinking we need different ways of doing things plainly. Um, there have been very concerning um, reports coming from care homes. So mm -hmm. people are thinking about different ways in which they might be able to live with some support in in their later years and that's um and that's meant that there's been a bit of an upsurge in interest um with home share so although at the moment we we're not able to introduce home share for those of you who are not so familiar with it is um 
uh, uh, somebody who has a home and space in that home, but may value and benefit from a little bit of help um, and or possibly be on their own and 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 feeling a little isolated shares their home with um, uh, often somebody younger um, who's happy to help out and um, also might be wanting company so it's a it's a very simple concept um, we're not able to match people at the moment because um, because of social distancing and all of that. But we're very keen to get started again as soon as we possibly can and um, and 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 get home share um, uh, spreading the word really about home share. Uh, as far as Banbury, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> it it sounds a wonderful idea, and it, it's as you say, it's so simple and. Um, Leading on from two weeks ago, we were talking about the homeless and everything. And, um, you know, you think, well, there could be people, mm -hmm. unfortunately, going forward, if, if redundancies and things do happen, there could well be people who suddenly find themselves in, in a position that they never dreamt they, they um, would. Mm -hmm. But um, this whole volunteering business, it, it sort of ties in with with home sharing and as you say bringing old and young together it could be could have enormous benefits so um um and um oh one last thing penny and um, the oxford care awards i noticed um you you oh, were going yes. to have a ceremony you were going to have a a presentation did you did you make all those awards? <laughs> what happened? Like, well, I'm afraid. Like swearing in. <laughs> I'm afraid we didn't have um, we didn't have a ceremony um, because of because of what we've been talking about quite a lot. Covid, which stopped a lot of things, didn't didn't it? Um, but those care awards are so important because I, I think we've all seen a lot more over the last few weeks than we often did the value of people who are providing care for other people in their own homes um, and usually that's behind closed doors it's very hidden care uh, it's not a very well paid role and the care awards are all about celebrating that so again we're very keen to get um, to get to get back to those when when we can all move about a little bit more freely did you, so did you actually award them this year or in, we, or, or no we we so the the panel met they agreed on the awards and people who who people know that they have been awarded um, one of the care awards um, but it's just not quite as special as um, that happening very publicly mm, no exactly I, I know I know um, the Sylvia, my, my predecessor, she was unable to do her High Sheriff Awards. And, um, you know, it's, it's just so sad, isn't it? But, um, well, if you do some awards coming up for, for this year, if, if, we, if we have got more freedom by, by um, you know, next March, um, I would love to come and meet some of the people who you give awards to. Um, fantastic uh, we'd love to invite you thank you very much that's that, great offer that, that would be really really good um so uh, so uh, tim what other plans do you have with visit banbury have you got any other events sure. planned? um yeah so we're working on a project at the moment called the banbury circle of kindness so that's something that's ongoing at the moment that is really trying to bring together people who maybe haven't been as negatively impacted financially during the lockdown. So we're, we've requested that we have donors of at least of a hundred pounds. Um, and what we're doing, we're taking their pledges. We haven't taken any money off anybody. We take their pledge and then we're working with good causes to identify things that they might need for their beneficiaries or their organizations. And instead of just a transaction, a donation, a charitable donation happening, we're trying now to find small businesses in Banbury who've been really negatively impacted by being locked down and closed for a number of months, not able to trade. And we're working to try and broker the transaction through those businesses. 
So we're working on one at the moment to thank some public some public facing uh, workers at the moment, where we're trying to put like a nice thank you pack together, some just some toiletries and some treats for them to send to them to say thank you very much for all your hard work during the period. Uh, we're also having some conversations with one or two of the organisations on this call actually about how we can do that. We've raised just over twelve hundred pounds. Um, and we're hoping to do a couple of transactions in the coming weeks. So that's a, a big thing for us at the moment, but um, we will continue. Uh, we have another age-friendly Banbury project, which we'll be sort of refocusing on. We're looking at a welcome garden. So mm -hmm. if you, when you do come to visit us uh, by the RBS building at Cornhill, there is a bit of a scruffy piece of land. So we're looking mm -hmm. to do a welcome garden. And um, uh, there's a project called the Friendly Bench that comes again out of one of the Eden project, projects um, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that we will get the funding and the everything in place, the planning to be able to transform this scrubby bit of land into a lovely age-friendly welcome garden. Oh I love that idea. I'm um, Gardening is probably my most, um, you know, my, my best hobby really. Um, if you'd see my fingernails, they're, um, they're pretty grubby at the moment. <laughs> well well um, hopefully once we get back to a little bit of normal we can we can invite you along to maybe come and open the garden for us that would be well nice. i'd so, love to i'll come and yeah. do a bit of weeding in the scrubby oh, patch yeah. actually <laughs> exactly. there'll be plenty of that needed as well so. <laughs> thank you um oh it's wonderful um, um um maybe i should just ask all three of you maybe starting with keith if if i was coming to banbury um i mean i do know banbury quite well but um keith um, what is your your top thing for me to see in Banbury? <laughs> what? <laughs> Come and see us and what we do. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, have a have a trot round um, Castle Quay and and see what you think of the shops that are still there, and uh, mm -hmm. and um, you know and what you've heard as you as how many are disappearing and everything see how empty you think it is that that would be a that would be a a, a worthwhile experience as well from what you said i think but mm -hmm. do do come in come and come and knock the door come and see us we'd love to see you show you what we do fantastic i was going to say um somebody's put a little note on the thing i was reading i didn't know zoom did this with it and not i've never been in one with so many people so i've been reading the notes there somebody asked about what software we're using there's two types. Um, with the software we're using for the community transport, that's um, called Road Access. Somebody's written there what it is. But what we've been doing for the food one, um, we, we because it was a different type of need, um, it's I developed it myself through um, Google Sheets. That's part of what I was doing for those days in between it running. And, and an advantage of the way we're doing it now, and that's zoning and all that, that all ties into... To, the, to how we're doing it but it's completely free we weren't spending any money on any software no no ongoing charges no development charges nothing like that it was what i put together for this um and it and it copes with it very very well as i say it's not phenomenally busy but um but uh, uh because we were phenomenally busy with what we used to do mm. it's, it's, but it copes with it very very well so i thought i'd answer that question mm -hmm. on there that i that appeared so thanks for that um, so Tim, what 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 would you tell me to come and see? Uh, well, I can't run an organisation called Visit Banbury without really wanting to say everything. But uh, in, in a nutshell, I, I would suggest when everything's back open, a pint of hooky in the reindeer, some Japanese food in sushi. Uh, a lovely walk around the museum, which is incredible. The new pie gallery, amazing. I, I and a really want at the mill. Um, <laughs> and I think coming out of the mill, have a performance in the mill. Yeah. Maybe a glass of wine in their bar, and then sit looking across the canal when the sun shines out. That's a perfect visit to Banbury, I would say. Fantastic. Will you come and take me round the museum? I must say, I, I've I've seen the museum, and it's it's one of those things that you think I'm going to go and then you you're running late and your meters you know your your car you've got to go get back to that so I would um, can we have a date to go absolutely. to the museum? I'm sure I'm sure <laughs> Simon Townsend would be absolutely delighted if you came and visited his museum because 
it, I mean, ju we're joking apart. It, it genuinely now is something that will bring people from London and Birmingham because it has national exhibitions there now that don't go elsewhere. They only go, maybe go to two or three places across the country. So it's a real draw now for us. So uh, fantastic. 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 Um, and, and Penny, it's probably, probably I should be asking B rather than Penny um, <laughs> what, what to see in Banbury. Because Penny, I guess you, you don't live in Banbury. I don't live in Banbury, no, but I was going to suggest that um, what you should do when you visit Banbury is meet B. Right. <laughs> so I think that my, 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 my <laughs> list of top things would be basically meeting people, I think. And yeah. one of them would have to be B. Um, mm -hmm. Another would have to be um, our Age UK Oxfordshire teams who work in Banbury, including our dementia support teams. So meet some people who are working with people and then a visit to the Royal Voluntary Society Cornhill Centre when they uh, reopen because you would have an opportunity there to see the fab work they're doing and to meet a lot of older people. Fantastic. Well, I, I sort of, I'm getting more hopeful that, um, you know, it, it might not be too long before I can, um, um, get out and about and um, even if it's sort of smaller groups but sometimes I think smaller groups are, are sort of better really you learn a bit more perhaps um, but um, well I don't know what the time is but I've gosh it's been it's time been now <laughs> I'm, You're um, doing... I'm so yeah. grateful to OCF for setting these up because um, it really is a way that I can sort of reach out a little bit and um, and Actually, yes, I think I am going to be the best brief high sheriff by the time I do get out to see people. <laughs> um, but it's, um, no, it's been really, really good. And um, uh, can, can I thank you there, Amanda? Because it's always, it's always wonderful to hear you have a sort of conversation with some amazing organisations. And I feel today, just listening, that we've had a virtual tour of Banbury actually and I would like to challenge any of the participants on the call um, who has not been to Banbury because uh, if you haven't you need to go um, and there's great stuff going and I'm very impressed that Keith you developed that software um, by yourself which is uh, something to be shared so if you're willing to share that I think there might be lots of groups that could uh, benefit from uh, your hard work on that too. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> but thank you all. I think is there a question there? Could Penny ask uh, th then answer national stats for the elderly and no internet? What was the age? The age was over seventy-five, wasn't it, Penny? When you were talking about forty percent not being having access to the internet, it was based on those over seventy-five. Is Penny still there? Yes, but she's too dim to remember she has to turn herself back <laughs> before she starts answering a question. Um, yes, um, so those stats were over 75s, yes. Yeah. And you can find Sorry. them uh, in the um, Joint Strategic Needs Assessment, Oxfordshire Joint Strategic Needs Assessment, which, which, which is available online. Um, so the, all of that data's there um, and can be mined. Sorry, Penny. Can I, can I ask a question? Um, it was actually my question. Um, I know you said 75s in Oxfordshire. That's what I wanted to double check. It was 75s nationally as well. Is that correct? It's 75 nationally. Yes. yes. Could you send me a link? I'd be grateful. To yeah, I can. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, yeah. thank you. I will. Um, just, just perhaps on that, we can we can share all the links actually when we do our little follow up email because I think there's been quite a good exchange today on the chat and that is always really encouraging because that's really what these webinars are for. It is a space for everyone to hear what other people are doing and if there are opportunities for partnership then obviously we hope that that will have helped join up the dots. So wherever we can we will share the resources where you've kindly given us uh, permission to do so. But uh, if I can just say thank you very much again to Amanda Punsonby, our High Sheriff of Oxfordshire and to all our speakers today, um, it's, it's been a joy. Um, and here's to Banbury. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.
Thanks, everyone. That was a really good discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And a really, really lively chat box as well. <laughs> really lively chat box today. I'm going to end the recording now. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Take care.